let us describe this universe say uh, why i am telling you because we are a part of this universe and we want to study universe as it is say uh, many aspects are there one may say one may say that there is a physics there is a chemistry there may be geography parts of space science history all these aspects are there but we are going to study step by step so in this series of lectures uh, that is unified concept of education we are going to discuss what is this universe so uh, first uh, let us consider a night sky particularly you are away from city lights because you are aware that uh, nowadays uh, the problems of light pollution okay that is light light pollution are far more uh, existing so you are at such a place where no such light pollution is there and then you are observing night sky you may see variety variety of stars or say i will, uh, I will not say stars uh, objects in the night sky but during day sky you will see hardly two to three objects should i name yes obviously uh, nowadays what we are observing that is sun sometimes moon and in very rare occasion uh, only expert can locate out venus these three objects uh, they are from the space we can observe otherwise you may say clouds are there and smoke fog etc forget of that but uh, what is in the sky uh, that is in the space you are able to observe right now these three objects in the sky uh, day sky whereas uh, you may notice out uh, i am saying you may because it is said that uh, in the space chances of blast of star that is called as supernova that is also there uh, but when we don't know they say uh, within next 200 years any time this can happen particularly in uh, orion uh, constellation this is going to get happen but if the supernova is there then can be visible because once upon time such supernova uh, particularly during period of chandragupta maurya the great emperor of india at that time this supernova was visible and it is reported that during day sky also the supernova was visible uh, but uh, right now we can say in the sky day sky only three objects are visible they are sun moon and uh, in uh, rare of rare occasion or say only for experts they can locate out venus but just imagine if there is a solar eclipse and particularly total solar eclipse then in day sky also stars and various space objects are visible but right now we are focusing only on night sky now uh, i am terminating here and want let you know that we are not discussing to the point let me clear we are discussing in general way we are gathering knowledge say so whatever i am speaking here that uh, is actually a part of knowledge what we want to convey to you and you have to think over that now we are again coming to point so uh, here we are discussing about now night sky so look in this dark of night sky you will see various objects in this sky all objects are not looking similar if you observe carefully you may notice that certain objects are blinking out whereas certain objects they are having stationary light the objects in night sky those who are having stationary light other than moon they are planets so you may notice planets and you may notice stars usually planets appear brighter than other stars because planets are very close to earth as compared to other stars now you are aware of galaxies and uh, many students are having this type of concept in mind that whatever stars we are observing during night time do they belong to our galaxy or 
we are able to observe stars from other galaxies also so here the answer is that whatever stars we are observing they are from our galaxy only we can't observe stars from other galaxies in our night sky we can observe entire galaxy but not stars like scattered stars from other galaxy so i am revising again whatever you are observing in the night sky other than moon if light is steady then there are planets if light is not steady blinking something is there then there are stars but not all blinking objects are stars so here we have to again focus that a uh, variety of stars are there yeah some stars they are having blue color you may notice clearly a tinge of blue that is observed in this sky uh, sorry in these stars so some stars they are having blue color usually we classify them under a category that is called as blue giants some stars they are having whitish or yellowish color they are like our sun some stars they are having reddish color they are called as red giants so uh, as name indicate blue giant and red giant let me tell you uh, now whatever our solar system is there i'm just revising i'm not uh, giving detail information right now but if you are going from sun the first known planet that is mercury the second that is venus third is earth fourth mars then there should be a planet or there was a planet but it blasted out or may be possible the particles are not united to form a planet over there whatever the condition but a missing space is there then giant planet that is jupiter keep in mind the biggest planet rather i should say biggest known planet in our solar system why because we are not able to explore the entire solar system yet and therefore i am saying biggest known planet in our solar system that is jupiter then uh, saturn these all planets and obviously earth is there so these all planets are visible with our normal eye from earth whereas beyond saturn whatever is the distance between sun to saturn almost that is the distance between saturn to uranus next planet is uranus i am revising whatever the distance is there from sun to saturn almost that distance is there from saturn to uranus which is next planet so uranus can be observed by normal eye answer is yes but for that purpose you must be expert in sky gazing you should observe clear night sky uh, light pollution should not be there clouds should not be there atmosphere must be extremely clear haze that is some sort of mist uh, say we can say very very thin mist so that should not be there then we can able to observe this uranus very very faint object but with telescope this is visible next planet is neptune all right these are the names of planet now when we are talking of red giants or blue giants their size may be very very large from sun to saturn entire solar system that is the size of red giant or that is the size of blue giant also but blue giant is having extremely hot temperature whereas red giant is having very very low temperature don't consider it is freezing and something but very low temperature means around 5000 degree celsius temperature is there that is for red giant so these are a few varieties of stars we have discussed i have not discussed all types of star they are neither known to me and nor to scientists all types of star but many types of stars they are now uh, discovered variety of stars binary stars and a variety of things are now uh, discovered now uh, let us consider once again about galaxy so we are there as a part of galaxy our galaxy uh, let me clear uh, this is all hypothetical because no one able to uh, observe our galaxy 
from top view how it is observed but with various observations scientists propose that our galaxy is a spiral galaxy it is a double arm galaxy and uh, suppose this is the galaxy this is disket shape we can observe but if you observe from side view you will be uh, uh, able to observe only a line like thing uh, rather i should say that uh, our galaxy i will give you two shapes you are aware of chakli a spiral so our galaxy is same way like chakli if you observe from front view uh, top view but from side view if you observe it is something like idli that is having a double convex lens like structure so from top also it is bulging out and from bottom also it is bulging out our galaxy is not simply like a chakli spiral no it is double arm galaxy so from central point two arms are coming out and then where is the our location our location is towards periphery towards periphery two arms are there and connecting line is there and our solar system is there in this peripheral part connecting line so this is our location in the our galaxy now uh, the most important thing how many stars are there in our galaxy but at least 100 billion stars are there in our galaxy like that there are clusters of galaxies today's knowledge is saying this way that there are clusters of galaxies and uh, our cluster of galaxy is something like made up of 100 galaxies like that various clusters of galaxies are located in the sky now we have to discuss somewhat detail according to our present knowledge we can consider uh, you are observed that uh, cracker that uh, it is going in the sky and blasting out in form of sphere so something like the sphere is there and each point is made up of hundred of galaxies so like that our present day our knowledge about this universe so we are going to now conclude first part that uh, what is this nature of this universe i am revising we are going to conclude now what is the nature of this universe in universe according to our present knowledge two things are there one is called as matter other is called as energy matter is distributed in form of galaxies galaxies are consisting of stars stars are having their planetary systems planets may have satellites okay this way the matter is distributed but biggest question what is total matter in this universe because we are not 100% aware of this universe we can't say whereas a uh, certain matter in this universe is there that is not at all emitting any radiation radiation means light here so it is not at all emitting any type of radiation such a matter that is called as dark matter okay uh, let us now focus on this concept what is dark matter but prior to this i must tell you uh, about temperature now uh, you are aware that on earth or rather i should say on earth surface when we march from equator to north pole or equator to south pole temperature decreases north pole is having no land only ice cap south pole is having land that is antarctica and on antarctica continent about uh, altitude that is height from sea level of 3000 meter south pole is located so on earth surface supposed to be the coldest place is south pole where temperature is going somewhere around minus 89 minus 90 degree celsius but uh, 
again and again i am saying on earth's surface because when we are going higher the altitude initially temperature decreases and that can go till minus 100 also if you are going in the space then what is the least possible temperature so that least possible temperature is calculated that is called as minus 273 degree celsius i am revising least possible temperature in this universe this is calculated that is minus 273 degree celsius actual figure is something different minus 273.15 again minus 273.14 and some huge figure is there that is minimum possible temperature but for general purpose we are considering it is minus 273 degree celsius where i should consider this temperature as uh, we can consider as an absolute temperature absolute zero so this is measured in terms of a unit that is called as kelvin this is si unit of temperature where minus 273 degree celsius is considered as zero kelvin uh, we should not say zero degree kelvin we have to say only zero kelvin so minus 273 degree celsius that is equal to zero kelvin that means simple thing is that if i want to check temperature in terms of kelvin i have to add 273 into degree celsius so suppose i am saying that today's temperature of mumbai is 27 uh, sorry is 27 degree celsius so 27 plus 273 that is 300 kelvin getting idea so from degree celsius to kelvin we have to add 273 from kelvin to degree celsius we have to subtract 273 so suppose i am saying that temperature is 273 kelvin degree celsius so minus 273 273 minus 273 0 so it is 0 degree celsius so like that we can convert celsius into kelvin or kelvin into celsius but si unit of temperature that is considered as kelvin now again keep in mind that temperature is minus 20 degree celsius minus 50 degree celsius but not minus 5 kelvin because that's why we are calling that as an absolute temperature absolute temperature never goes in negative term minimum possible temperature is 0 kelvin okay now what is the peculiarity of 0 kelvin let me clarify whatever the particles in this universe though it is atom it is molecule or something else they are in continuous motion continuously they are moving they are having vibratory motion oscillating then bending vibrations and so many things are there all possible direction we can say that they are oscillating and vibrating but at 0 kelvin their all motion stops neither they are moving from one place to another neither they are moving uh, that is a uh, that uh, word is something uh, we can say uh, with relative concept but uh, in relative concept it will not move from one place to another whereas uh, they will not oscillate they will not vibrate they will not form any motion and therefore they will not emit any radiation if such radiations any radiations are not emitted by particle or that matter then that matter is called as dark matter i am revising the word uh, if any radiations are not emitted by matter then that matter is called as dark matter so uh, in this universe what we are able to observe that objects are emitting out radiations but if object is not emitting any radiation at all then that is called as dark matter okay again question is there what is the radiation
what is the radiation let us discuss now radiation so uh, first part a variety of radiations are available say for example uh, certain radiations are made up of particles for example you might have heard about alpha particles uh, elements like radium they are emitting out alpha particles so alpha particle this is particle based radiation beta particles particle based radiation cathode rays particle based radiation so like that certain radiations they are made up of particles high speed particles say for example alpha particle or alpha rays minimum speed of alpha rays is 3000 km per second and maximum speed is 30000 km per second so here we are getting different speeds of alpha particle but you can easily consider 3000 km per second too high speed within less than second particle can travel from mumbai to delhi that is the speed of that particle which is we are calling slow moving alpha particle whereas fast moving alpha particle 30000 km per second so like that very high speeds are there for alpha particle or like that radiation then we are calling that as particle based radiation another type is there that is called as electromagnetic radiation now here we are going to discuss little bit about electromagnetic radiation but prior to that third type of electromagnetic radiation only but we are calling them as lesser lesser is short form but we are calling that category of radiation as lesser radiation or laser radiation okay now uh, let us consider once again electromagnetic radiation the first type of electromagnetic radiation uh, that uh, that we clarify once again these radiations are having certain energies i am revising radiations are associated with energy do you agree simple experiment uh, you are aware of uh, instrument microwave oven microwave is category of radiation only and if you are keeping object in that microwave radiation uh, microwave oven then you are getting it hot okay so radiations possess energy still don't believe just go and stand in sunlight at afternoon time you will get tremendous heat by that sunlight that is also energy possessed by that radiation so every radiation is associated with some sort of energy maybe it is very high maybe it is very low now we are arranging all these radiations according to energy so i will explain you these radiations in decreasing manner of energy highest energy radiation that is uh, supposed to be cosmic radiations but uh, no much of the research is available about this cosmic radiations many doubts are there so i am not considering cosmic radiation right now here so if you eliminate this cosmic radiation then uh, then in the known radiation gamma rays they are having highest energy so we are starting our chart with gamma radiation so gamma rays having highest energy then x rays now there are variety of x rays but uh, we are considering here only single thing that is x ray then vacuum ultraviolet these ultraviolet radiations are having existence in vacuum the moment it enters in atmosphere within short uh, range they get absorbed by atmosphere therefore we are calling them as vacuum ultraviolet then ultraviolet you are aware from many tv advertisement you are aware of this type of radiation they are called as uh, ultraviolet radiation and uh, from tv advertisement it is very clear for many of us that ultraviolet radiations are harmful but reality no ultraviolet radiations all categories of ultraviolet radiations are not harmful few categories yes certainly they are harmful but not all categories of alpha uh, ultraviolet radiations they are harmful in fact 
uh, ultraviolet radiations are very very essential uh, in order to synthesize D vitamin in our body and by our body. That's why we required ultraviolet radiations also. So they are present in atmosphere. How you can check ultraviolet radiations are present or not? Because they are invisible radiations. A simple test I will tell you that uh, if ultraviolet radiations are present, then you are aware of fluorescent colors. So fluorescent color that appears bright in presence of ultraviolet radiation. In absence of ultraviolet radiation, fluorescent color is not appearing bright. You may check LED. So in LED light, fluorescent objects are appearing brighter. You may say tube light, ordinary tube light. In that tube light also, objects are appearing brighter, fluorescent object. But if you, uh, now it is very rare, but if you check tungsten lamp, then in tungsten lamp light, you will see fluorescent object is not that brightly observed. The thing is that tungsten lamp is not emitting out much of ultraviolet radiations. But tube light, LED light, they are emitting out good quality of or variety of ultraviolet radiation. And daylight, obviously, sunlight is very good source of ultraviolet radiations. And they are reaching to surface of earth. Now, high class example, uh, there is reaction between methane and chlorine. It is taking place in presence of ultraviolet radiations which are present in diffused sunlight. Diffused sunlight means what? Say suppose outside your room direct sunlight is there and that is reflected light is coming to your room. Then that light is called as diffused sunlight. In diffused sunlight also these ultraviolet radiations are present and they are able to carry out reaction between chlorine and methane. So this is something I am explaining about ultraviolet radiation. So let me clarify once again. Gamma radiations, X radiation, that is X-rays, then vacuum ultraviolet, ultraviolet. All these four radiations we are considering as invisible radiation because we are not able to observe them. But energically they are very high energy radiation. Obviously decreasing energy. So gamma rays highest energy, then X-rays, then ult uh, vacuum ultraviolet, then ultraviolet. Keep aside, now violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red, with GR. Only these radiations are observed by us. We are able to observe only these radiations. So they are called as with GR, visible range of radiations. Next, infrared that is below red color, therefore called as infrared, then far infrared, then microwave, and lastly radio waves. So least energy is possessed by radio waves. Now uh, these radiations we are going to explain in details, somewhat detail uh, than uh, what I am explaining here to that somewhat detail in atomic structure part. And then we will have a separate lesson about these radiations. Uh, there we are going to discuss at depth. So you can able to revise this radiation in atomic structure part also. So uh, now we are discussing this about universe and therefore I am focusing till here. So whatever you are observing night sky, that is only visible light. Invisible radiations we are not able to observe. Now, from Earth, we can't observe gamma rays, X-rays and vacuum ultraviolet rays if at all they are emitted by any object. But if you are there in the space, that means you are going uh, beyond the atmosphere, then we can able to detect, I can't say observe, but can able to detect these radiations with help of certain telescopes. So, for example, uh, certain telescopes are there in the space, say for example, uh, Chandra X-ray Observatory. Chandra is not considered here as moon, but Indian scientist name work for NASA. His name is given to that X-ray Observatory. Uh, in space science, he uh, proposed that what is the minimum mass of star that is required so that it can be converted into black hole. That is called that Chandra limit. On basis of that scientist's name, 
द एक्सरे ऑब्जर्वेटरी इज गिवन नेम एट चंद्रा एक्सरे ऑब्जर्वेटरी अदर ऑल ऑब्जर्वेटरीज आर देअर दे आर वर्किंग इन धीस रेंज इवन हबल टेलिस्कोप इज देअर विच इज वर्किंग इन व्हिजिबल एज वेल एज टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट अल्ट्रा वॉयलेट अँड मॅक्झिमम एक्सटेंट इन्फ्रा रेड रेडिएशन सो इनव्हिजिबल रेडिएशन्स आर देअर इन द स्पेस व्हेरियस ऑब्झर्वेटरीज ऑब्विसली नॉट सेंड बाय इंडिया यट दे आर मॅक्झिमम ऑब्झर्वेटरीज आर सेंड बाय नासा ओनली दॅट इज फ्रॉम अमेरिका यू एस ए सो दे आर वर्किंग इन द स्पेस अँड वी आर एबल टू अवेअर अबाउट दॅट सर फॉर एक्झाम्पल इफ यू ऑब्झर्व सन नाव देर आर फिल्टर्स फिल्टर मीन्स वॉट विच विल अलाव ओनली वन रेडिएशन टू पास रेस्ट ऑफ रेडिएशन्स गेस ट्रॉप फॉर एक्झाम्पल गॅमा रेस फिल्टर गॅमा रेस फिल्टर विल अलाव ओनली गॅमा रेस टू पास रिमेनिंग ऑल रेडिएशन्स विल गेट स्टॉप सो इफ यू आर युजिंग गॅमा रेस फिल्टर अँड टेकिंग फोटोग्राफ ऑफ सन अँड फोटोग्राफ ऑफ मून देन मून मे अपियर मिलियन टाइम ब्राईटर दॅन सन ओके मून इज व्हेरी गुड सोर्स ऑफ गॅमा रेडिएशन्स बट बिकॉज गॅमा रेडिएशन्स आर हॅव्हिंग व्हेरी स्मॉल रेंज इन ॲटमॉस्फियर सो फॉर एक्झाम्पल ऑन धीस सर्फेस ऑफ अर्थ हार्डली टेन टू ट्वेल्व सेंटीमीटर डिस्टन्स इज ट्रॅव्हल बाय गॅमा रेज अँड अपर पार्ट्स ऑफ ॲटमॉस्फियर ऑब्विसली रेअर ॲटमॉस्फियर इज देअर लिटल बिट मोर बट गॅमा रेज आर नॉट रिचिंग टू द सर्फेस ऑफ अर्थ दे आर एमिटेड बाय मून सो इन द स्पेस we can able to observe these radiations with help of instruments only now uh, visible light obviously visible light is reaching to earth surface many students are having doubt uh, how we can say because we are able to observe sun we are able to observe moon and whatever night sky objects that means that visible light is coming to earth surface no doubt partially it is getting absorbed by atmosphere 100% percent visible light is not reaching to the surface of earth partially it is getting absorbed by earth uh, earth's atmosphere and then only it can reach to the surface of earth it depends upon the quality of atmosphere what is the percentage that is getting absorbed but usually we are going higher the altitude say for example uh, i am going to himalay particularly trans himalayan region beyond himalay there is a cold desert of ladakh leh ladakh this desert is there where we can observe these objects brighter the thing is that uh, atmosphere is very very clear and we are there above 5000 meter altitude 4000 meter altitude and then uh, chances of haze that is uh, mist that is also not there if you are going to higher the altitude obviously we can observe stars as well as uh, these all planets and all thing more clearly and therefore uh, the telescope that hubble telescope is their mirror telescope which is there in the space so uh, that telescope is having very clear vision now apart from that uh, infrared radiations are also there they are also little bit absorbed by atmosphere but many of them are reaching to surface but uh, such observatory is kept in space that is called as spitzer uh, infrared uh, radiation observatory so we are having this type of uh, various things in the sky whereas microwave and radio waves they are reaching to earth surface keep in mind the energy is low range is more so radio waves are having tremendous high energy uh, sorry tremendous low energy therefore tremendous high range and so one such radio telescope is there in india in present india uh, in maharashtra there is a district called as pune district where the location is near narayan gaon we are having a very good radio wave telescope now this telescope uh, don't be under impression that telescope means we have to uh, use your Uh, that uh, tube is there and you have to go through that no here radio telescope is there uh, that is in form of dish antenna so various dish antennas are there huge dish antennas are there and they are collecting out radio waves and with help of computer and all that images are generated so uh, how we are getting this knowledge about this universe the obvious thing is that through all these radiations right from gamma rays to radio waves 
whatever the radiations are there from that we are getting knowledge about this universe because that we can see either directly or with help of our instruments but tremendous matter is there which is not at all emitting any radiations that is called as dark matter so now you are aware after all this discussion what is dark matter dark matter is not at all emitting any radiation that is having temperature as absolute zero that means zero kelvin that means minus 273 degrees celsius and therefore it will not emit any kind of radiations and we are not able to see that dark matter how much this dark matter is there and how much some other part is also there that is called as dark energy because uh, energy now let us consider now about energy what you are able to observe radiations that is form of energy only energy can be expressed in various form mechanical energy heat energy like that so you are aware of kinetic energy potential energy so these are form of energy in old physics two things were considered separate keep in mind just focus it is somewhat more important in old physics matter was considered as separate and uh, energy was considered as separate but in latter phase because of the great scientist albert einstein uh, he was able to give formula that is e is equal to m into c square c is speed of light square of that that was energy is there according to his formula matter and energy they are interconvertible so one can convert matter into energy or energy into matter according to his formula in later on with help of this formula scientists like de broglie they suggested dual nature of matter they say at a time matter is there and at a time energy is there this is beyond my imagination but they are able to prove the scientists that at a time particle like electron can be considered as a wave or can be considered as a particle and then onwards we are aware that matter and energy they are interconvertible or many time we are considering now dual nature of matter that matter as well as energy so we have to go by that concept now so uh, in this universe matter is there and energy is there but now we are aware that many energies we are not able to get yet and then the energies which we are not able to explain we are calling them as dark energy clear so dark energy that energy we are not able to explain that is called as dark energy together lead with our present knowledge total dark matter and dark energy in this universe is about 96% i don't know how they calculated but they say they mean scientists they say total dark matter and dark energy is about 95 to 96% that means today scientists are aware about this universe hardly 4 to 5% getting idea so today is the greatest scientist because say i can consider isaac newton as a great scientist i can consider albert einstein is a great scientist but at their time the scope of knowledge was very limited generations after generation knowledge is expanded isaac newton was not aware of these all uh, radiations or uh, rather i should say that uh, these modern techniques and all that but today scientists they are very great and still we believe that we are aware about this universe just 4 to 5 percent 95 to 96 percent universe not clear to us and then we are talking about superstitious belief so we have to consider anyhow so i am revising again i am revising this part again that whatever the energy that we are not able to explain that is called as dark energy whatever the matter that we are not able to see because it is not at all emitting any radiation that is called as dark matter together the dark matter and dark energy that comprises of 95 to 96% according to present knowledge okay so this is something we are just discussing overview of the universe
We are discussing here about stars. Star. Actually, if you are uh, trying to observe this universe, you will get idea that star is a furnace to create new elements. I am revising. Star is a furnace to create new elements. Now, uh, whatever, if you are observing material on earth, it is made up of mixtures. Mixtures are made up of compounds. Uh, usually, any two elements are mixed, then also mixture. One element and one compound is mixed, then also mixture. Two compounds are mixed, then also mixture, minimum. And you can multiply, say, five compounds and one element then also mixture, so there is no fixed relation. But compounds, they are made up of certain elements only. Say for example water, H2O. Two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, they are combining together. We are having uh, water. Now, compounds are made up of elements. And the starting material, the simplest element, is hydrogen. For more detail you can go to our next uh, lecture that is atomic structure. But uh, here we are focusing simplest element that is hydrogen. Why I am saying that simplest element is hydrogen? Because hydrogen is having only one proton and one electron. I am revising. Hydrogen is having only one proton and one electron. Now, electron is revolving around nucleus that is made up of only proton. So, electron is revolving around proton that is the simplest structure, simplest atom that is hydrogen which is abundantly present in this universe. Right now, we can check out our sun is having about 76% hydrogen yet. So, the most abundant element in this universe, most probably it is hydrogen. It is fundamental simple element. Now, what happened on sun, rather I should say in sun, that because of tremendous gravity, these all hydrogen atoms, they are combining at center together where very high temperature is generated and under high gravity there is a reaction that is called as fusion reaction. I am revising what is name of reaction? Fusion reaction. It is taking place in various steps. But uh, in order to get simplified I may say that four atoms of hydrogen, more precisely four nuclei of hydrogen but generally we are using word atoms. So four atoms of hydrogen they are combining together to form one atom of helium. Hydrogen is represented as hydrogen 1 1. That means its atomic number is 1, mass number is 1. Whereas uh, helium is represented as He 2 4. That means its atomic number is 2 and mass number is 4. What is atomic number? What is mass number? And from that, what we are going to calculate? Just observe our lecture that is atomic structure. There this is explained in very depth. Now I am revising again that four atoms of hydrogen they are combining together to give one atom of helium. Now in this process if you observe carefully there is a little bit mass loss. Where that mass goes that mass is converted into energy and that energy that is tremendous high what we are using right now here on earth that energy is obtained from sun and sun is obtaining energy by this process that hydrogen atoms are combining together to give helium atom. So right uh, with our knowledge this type of hydrogen to helium conversion is going on sun uh, at least from 5 billion years ago the process started. And it is said that with expected calculations, 
still it may continue for next 5 billion years. So we are considering sun is a perpetual source of energy. So like that in the universe, uh, sorry, in our galaxy only, our estimation says 100 billion stars are there minimum. Now what happened that uh, this way hydrogen is converted into helium. Tremendous energy is exhausted. Now let us say uh, what is star making process. Star making process. Keep in mind star making process means not that we are going to prepare a star. Okay, this is just hypothetical process that how stars uh, might have made. So just uh, think that uh, in the space, as we consider in the space there is no air, no uh, molecules, atoms, everything is only vacuum. So this is something wrong. Uh, in the space also, certain particles are present. Say for example, atoms of hydrogen may be possible, very, very rare, but they are present. May be possible uh, within 20 cubic kilometer, one atom may be there. But like that, hydrogen atoms are there in the space. Now what happened that hydrogen atoms, they are going to combine together. You are aware there is a gravitational force. Because of that gravity, this hydrogen started collecting out together. This is all hypothesis, keep in mind. So, uh, like that hydrogen may convert into a huge mass. Because of gravity, and gravity acts towards center of that object, the all gases, that uh, hydrogen atoms, they are trying to move towards center of that object. As a result, at center, tremendous pressure is created. Now, two forces are acting. One force that is contracting. Why contraction is there? That is because of gravity. Whereas, when these gases are coming together and uh, they are creating pressure, there is process that is nuclear fusion reaction. As we discussed, that uh, four atoms of hydrogen, they will combine together to give one atom of helium. And like that, these helium molecules started uh, start forming there, whereas in this process there is mass loss and tremendous energy is generated. As a result, first is going to absorb that energy is hydrogen gas itself and temperature rises. You are aware that on rising out temperature gases are tend to expand. So here two forces are working simultaneously. One is force of contraction, other is expansion, simplest way. So, at certain point, we are saying there is an equilibrium. That means, whatever the uh, expansion force is there and whatever the contraction force is there, some sort of balancing that is there that we are calling as an equilibrium. And then, star is getting stabilized. In the beginning process of stabilization, may be possible star is emitting out certain material outside. That is called as flares. Now, young star is not that stable. It is achieving stability after some part, some time. Then, hydrogen is converted into helium. Suppose all hydrogen is converted into helium, then, then various possibilities are there. It depends upon the mass of that star. Say, for example, if mass of star is tremendous high enough, so the next reaction may start. That is, three atoms of helium will combine together to give one atom of carbon. Okay, if all helium is converted into carbon, then the next reaction may begin if mass is sufficiently high. Otherwise, it may stop at that point only. And like that, iron atomic number 26 and mass number 56 that is the last element form in this form of reaction. So literally speaking stars serve like a furnace of creating elements. Now let us assume if star is not able to propagate any further after formation of helium it is not able to propagate any further because that sufficient mass is not there so that it can contract and form carbon. Then what will happen? 
the obvious thing is that uh, it will stop generating heat that means expansion will not be there and then only contraction will be there then various possibilities are there out of that one possibility that may be possible that can get blast another possibility that can get diluted it can expand automatically how i don't know but it can expand and convert it into red giant it may be there that because of this expansion uh sorry contraction it can converted uh, into a thing that we are calling as a neutron star or can be converted into black hole also what is black hole may be possible neutron star only but having very high mass say there is hydrogen only one proton and one electron but suppose that electron fall in the nucleus then what will happen neutron so if all mass is concentrated say atom is hollow uh, almost volume of atom uh, and volume of nucleus ratio is 1 is to 1 lakh that means if volume of atom is 1 lakh then volume of nucleus is 1 so like that it can contract it to very tiny object and that can be converted into black hole but not all stars of hydrogen will convert into black hole for that purpose a limit is given by a scientist indian scientist but work for nasa so that is called a chandra limit but a uh, variety of possibilities are there that hydrogen will not convert into uh, sorry helium will not convert into carbon then then again same thing it may stop at carbon formation and then a um, miracle is there carbon will undergo very high pressure and obviously very high temperature and then star can be converted into huge diamond i hope you might remember this poetry twinkle twinkle little star so it is not a like a diamond it is a diamond in the sky so what we are able to observe huge diamond stars may be there and like that sometime the all material in the star get blast and at that time variety of new elements are also formed there may be possible earth is formed because of such dead stars remains of dead star and like that process is of several lakh years several crore years this happened and newer elements are formed in the space so like that we discuss something about various stars not all we have discussed okay thanks for observing now what is the most important thing here that after a discussion of this all you have to go through a test you will get test paper and you have to solve that test paper evaluate yourself thanks